Hi, I'm Chrissy Bielowitz with the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology, and I'm here with Dr. Mark Rothenberg of Cincinnati Children's Hospital. We're talking about a disease called eosinophilic gastritis, which has been historically characterized by levels of eosinophils in the tissues. And in a recent publication in the journal, Dr. Rothenberg and his colleagues provide additional information about the characteristics of the disease. Dr. Rothenberg, can you elaborate on that a bit? Yes, thank you, Chrissy. I'm um, pleased to have the opportunity to tell you about our recent study. In this paper, what we've done is looked at a series of patients with this disease, eosinophilic gastroenteritis, ranging from childhood into young adulthood. And what we've done for the first time is, is characterize the histological, pathological, molecular, and immunological features of the disease. And the reason it got published in the number one journal in our field, the Jackie, is because of the findings we have. We've uncovered a number of important um, features of this disease. First, we've described the basic histology of the disease. We have quantified the level of eosinophils in the tissue, identified the levels that we believe may be very helpful for the molecular, for the uh, cellular diagnostic criteria for the disease. Second, we've defined the pathological features in addition to the histology in terms of some of the endoscopic findings, and indeed a lot of the patients had some characteristic nodular patterns. Interesting and importantly, I'd refer all the, the, review, the viewers of this uh, video to take a look at the article because we provide very nice images in both the text and the supplement, and, and they should be helpful for your practice and understanding of this disease. Third, we've defined in this paper the molecular characteristics of the disease. So we've taken a look at the whole genome for its expression in the disease tissue, and we've discovered and characterized what we call now the eosinophilic gastritis transcriptome. Because most of our prior work on eosinophilic GI diseases is focused on eosinophilic esophagitis, we were interested in answering a, a fundamental question in the field, which was what is the molecular relationship between EG and E? EOE, eosinophilic esophagitis, and to our surprise we found that nearly uh, the whole transcriptome was not overlapping. There was an important overlap of a small set of the transcriptome and that was related to the uh, TH2 profiling that we defined, the role of uh, interleukin-13, the various chemokines, the eotaxins, and some other related uh, um, cytokines and also mast cell gene products. But the rest of the transcriptome was quite distinct. And that means that there's going to be probably important uh, therapeutic uh, commonality, but also some differences as we consider uh, the further treatment of this disease. And lastly, what I want to emphasize is what we uncovered in this paper which is that the peripheral blood eosinophil count is dramatically elevated in almost all patients and does normalize when the patients are in remission. So we have identified this to be a systemic GI disorder rather than just a local tissue disorder, which is what eosinophilic esophagitis is. And furthermore, that the peripheral blood can be used as a non-invasive biomarker to monitor the disease activity. This definitely needs to be further studied and validated in other patient populations, but we believe that this will be helpful to monitor patients and, and reduce the number of required endoscopies, which was... Um, currently the way in which the disease is monitored. Thank you, Dr. Rothenberg. Can you quickly highlight the importance of the, the findings that summarize what you think is the most important take-home message here? The important take-home message is that we've defined eosinophilic, eosinophilic gastritis as a TH2 allergic inflammatory process. Cardinal immune pathways are, pre are preserved with eosinophilic esophagitis but there are uh, very uh, substantial non-overlapping features. As a clinician, we've identified a series of tissue biomarkers, but also importantly, that the peripheral blood eosinophil count is uh, elevated and directly proportional to the tissue eosinophil level and other pathological features, and hence can be used to monitor patients' at, uh, disease activity. Thank you, Dr. Rothenberg. Quite welcome. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, please visit our YouTube channel. Thank you.